what you are. We appreciate you, Lord Jesus, for all that you have done for us and for the things that you're going to do for us. Father, we yield ourselves to you as a vessel today and ask that you use us for your glory and for your honor. Those hearts that are before us, those ears that are before us, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you anoint them right now. God, that the word that is brought forth will fall upon good ground. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for life, health, and strength. And one more day, walking on the top soil. God, I appreciate you. All that you are to all of us. So God, I ask you to look upon us today. Let your word go forth with authority. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Can we say amen? Amen. 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 It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord again on today. I thank God for all that he is and we appreciate everything that he is doing. The songwriter said he keeps on doing great things for me. Is there a witness in the house that he does? He continues to do great things for us. And I'm glad that he is a God of the continual. He continues to bless us. In times of challenge, he continues to bless us. We greet you in Jesus' name and to those who are in our digital audience. God, we thank you. Uh, we, we are grateful that you have chosen to, to see this live stream today. And we are grateful for all those who are in the, the in-person in, person in this service. Amen. We thank God for you all, our elders, ministers, deacons, deaconess, amen. Everyone in their perspective, please. Also, honor the Lord for our first lady, Sister Robin. Thank God for her in her traveling place as she has been, amen, uh, in Albuquerque. I think it was the last one. It was, okay, Albuquerque. Amen. We thank God uh, that she's with us today. Amen. Amen. I uh, believe that God has something for us today. I want to thank the praise team for uh, the uh, ministry that not only that they did uh, in our service today, but on yesterday, amen, at Effective Word Church, amen, uh, being praised, giving praise and worship to God. This church continues to be one of service and uh, sometimes you you don't really get um, should I say the credit uh, the glory is God but sometimes you want to hear a thank you uh, from different individuals amen and I, I wanted to just to say I want you all to not forget that our praise team uh, it was our praise team with their two people, <laughs> amen, that they gave praise and worship. Yeah. Our praise team yes, yes. and your, your two people, amen. Uh, I say that because sometimes they think, uh, for someone who doesn't know you, uh, they may think that that's their praise team. And so I, I, I look at things like that, and perhaps I shouldn't be saying this, amen, on the World Wide Web, but praise the Lord, I said it, so it's out there, and it will be out there forever. Praise Jesus. Amen, but thank you, amen, for your faithfulness, not only uh, to this church, but to different ministries. Thank you for, for that, because uh, you do, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? You, uh, you represent us well. You represent us well. We are, we are thankful for that. The word of the Lord comes to us, amen, today from the gospel according to St. Luke chapter number 13. St. Luke chapter number 13. We're going to do a little reading of uh, verses 10 through 17. Again, that is Luke chapter 
13 verses 10 through 17. Are you going to pray with us today? Amen. Amen. Beginning at verse 10 says, and he was teaching in the synagogue on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Amen. Before we get through this message today, can we give God an immediate praise? Amen. Before we get straight, can we give him amen? Amen. Uh, praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before he straightens out your situation. Can we give him some praise? Before you get the job, can we give him some praise? Before, amen, you have the surgery, can you give him some praise? Before you go through, amen, the problems in your life, can you give God some praise? Hallelujah. Glorify you for who you is. Glorify you for being the great God. Glorify you for being God all by yourself. And without Him, I can do nothing. Glorify Him for being a peacemaker. Glorify Him for being a wheel in the middle of your wheel. God, glorify Him for being a man, a shield and a buckler. Glorify Him for being the Alpha and Omega. Glorify Him for being the lily of your valley. Glorify Him for bringing the bright morning star. Come on, somebody, give Him some glory.
A short time afterwards, a dog trotted up to the, to the window, saw the sign and went inside. He looked at the receptionist and wagged his tail, then walked over to the sign, looked at it and whined. Getting the idea, it, man, the, the receptionist got the office manager. The office manager looked at the dog and was surprised, to say the least. However, the dog looked determined, so he led him into the office. Inside, the dog jumped on the chair and stared at the manager. The manager said to the dog, I can't hire you. The sign says you have to be able to type. The dog jumped down, went to the typewriter, and proceeded to type out a perfect letter. He took it out and went to the manager and gave it to him, then jumped back on the chair. The manager was stunned, but then told the dog, uh, listen, the sign says you have to be good with computers. The dog jumped down again and went to the computer. The dog proceeded to demonstrate his expertise with various programs and produce a sample spreadsheet and database and presented them to the manager. By this time, the manager was totally dumbfounded. He looked at the dog and said, I realize that you are a very intelligent dog and have some interesting abilities. However, I still can't give you the job. The dog jumped down and went to, the, and went to a copy of the sign and put his paw on the sentences that talked about being an equal opportunity employer. The manager said, yes, but the sign also says that you have to be bilingual. The dog looked at him straight in the face and said, meow. Laughter is good medicine. <laughs> Fortunately, most of us have, uh, haven't had that type of experience with a manager and with dogs. Still, even those of us who aren't true dog and animal lovers can appreciate a good dog joke when we hear it. But on a more serious note, despite the fact that Genesis 1 and 24 through 26 clearly states that man's dominion is over the animals and the earth. Scripture says that God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creepy things and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. God made the beast of the earth after his kind and the cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth on the earth after his kind, and God said that was good. We're to have dominion. Still, there are many people in the states and amen all over the world that believe that animals deserve equal or better treatment than human beings. It's all right and noble to protect the endangered species and elephants and amen, uh, neglected dogs and abused animals, but not the, at the expense of starving children, or battered wives, or the homeless in our community, or those that are, that are in the torn, amen, region where the fights are going on in, in amen, uh, Ukraine and in Israel, and the many people that, that are, are, are losing their lives and, and being impacted. 
man seen even today of, of, of a hospital and, and how many children there is. Uh, I think they said the last count was 1,900 uh, children had been killed, amen, in this last upright. Amen. Uh, I just want to say this. This is not the, the, the message, but I do want to say that it's important for us, amen, to look at our fellow man and be a blessing to our fellow man first. Come on, someone say amen. amen. One of our mothers I was uh, having a conversation with, amen, uh, uh, she had told me, she said, Pastor, um, you know, she, she sees television and she sees all these different programs, you know, they, they see the children uh, of St. Jude and different things like that. And you see the, the dogs and stuff. She said, Pastor, I only have so much money. She said, I give to the children. I give to them. And Pastor, I give. Man, to the to the neglected animals, those accused animals. But that's not, I, I, I give all that, but I don't have enough money to help the Jews. She didn't have enough money to help the Jews. Sometimes our mindset can be almost like that, amen? We will we'll help others. Man, many of us will willingly help others outside of our church and neglect those that are in the household of faith. Uh -oh. All right, let me go, let me go, go to, to the, 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 the text. The text says this, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Jesus apparently had been teaching in more than one of the, the man, synagogues. Man, and so uh, uh, in verse number 11 it says, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed over and could in no wise lift up herself. Notice Jesus here uh, was, was up teaching. Yeah. Amen. So it says to me if she was, if, if he was up teaching, amen, he was, we can denote, uh, we can note that uh, Bible study had already begun. Man, church had already been started. Then this woman with an infirmity came in late. Hmm. She got to church late. She wasn't fashionably late as some do to be seen of others. How many know folk like that? They make sure they come late so you can see them. They make sure they come late so you can see their new hat. They make sure they come late so you can see that new suit that they just brought. But some, amen, who have come, amen, when this woman came, she had a medical condition, amen, that immobilized her. And, and then she could only walk gingerly and walk softly, uh, amen, slowly rather. Amen, this woman got to church, she was making her way. She got there late, but she said, I got to get to, to the house of God yeah. because I believe that there's something for me in the house of the Lord. I don't care what it is that a man you're swamped over with. I don't care what your issue may be. I don't care how slow that you roll, how slow that you move. Get to the house of the Lord because in the presence of the Lord there is joy. In the presence of the Lord there is healing, there is deliverance in the presence of the Lord. I don't care how you get there. 
just get there. Tell your neighbor, amen, amen, and those of you, uh, amen, who, who have uh, your, your, your phones, uh, amen, you need to tell somebody, uh, and, and it doesn't matter how you get here, just get here. If you don't make it at 2 o'clock, I know that we try to be on time and we strive to do that. But if you find yourself and the enemy is fighting you and, and trying to keep you from getting to the house of the Lord, I dare you to keep coming. I dare you to keep moving. Hey, man, though there's a traffic jam, keep moving. Don't stop until you get to the house of the Lord. Because there's something here for you. There's something that will change your life. Something that will make your crooked way straight. Something that will cause you to be a victorious person in Christ Jesus. This woman had a musket, a muscular, a muscular skeleton. Someone say that for me. Muscular skeleton. Skeletal. Amen. Problem in her life. Some call this disorder scoliosis. It's when the spine is curved abnormally and a variety of problems affecting the hip bone, the thigh bone, the knees, and the feet. Scoliosis and its treatments cause, it can cause, amen, psychological problems and impact one's self-image. Please note the scripture said that she had a spirit of infirmity. This means that the origin of her infirmity was not organic. It was not biological, but it was spiritual. She had, she had the spirit of infirmity. Check this out. Some issues presented to God had not all the same origins. Those that were being healed by Jesus. Uh, in St. John 9, amen, here was a man that was born blind. It was not a spiritual condition. He was born blind, and, and those came and said, uh, Jesus, who sinned? Did this man sin that he's born blind, or did his parents sin because he was born blind? But Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents, but that the glory may be revealed, the glory may be manifested. Then in Mark 9, we find a, a boy who has a dumb spirit, and the scripture says that he tears a man at himself, and he foams and he gnashes with his teeth. What does Jesus do? Jesus rebukes the foul spirit. He called it a foul spirit and said unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you, come out of him and enter no more into him. And then you find that there was a paraplegic man that had laid at the gate for 38 years. He had an issue, amen. And the Bible said that Jesus just spoke to him and said, arise, take up your bed and walk. Amen. That means that there are some things that the origin is spiritual, and there are some things that the origin are physical. Amen. There are some things that just happen. But oh, I'm so glad that God knows how to make the proper diagnosis. God knows if it is a spiritual issue. He knows if it's an emotional issue. He knows if it's a financial issue. He knows, amen, if it is a spiritual, amen, issue that's going on in one's life. Here, this woman has a spirit of infirmity. A spirit of infirmity 
is a spiritual, amen, force that causes physical illnesses or weaknesses in individuals. It is seen as an enemy that can oppress or attack a person resulting in various, amen, health issues and physical limitations. A spirit of infirmity can also be related to moral and spiritual weaknesses that cause a person to stray from God. A spiritual, amen, infirmity can attach itself to a person, notice this, after a trauma, attach itself after an injury and can hinder the natural healing process a man that one needs. This condition caused her that she was bent over for 18 years. What has had you bent over for a long time? What is it that has had you with a hung down head for a long time. For some of us, it's because we have failed to forgive that brother or sister who injured us. The person who put you down. And because of, of, of your lack of, of, of not forgiving, Amen. You have a spirit of infirmity and you're bent over and cannot recover. I want you to know today that you'll stay bent until you recognize, amen, where you are and ask God to release. Come on, someone say, Lord, release me. Hallelujah. Release me of, amen, the, 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 the problems that I have in my mind, my thought process, the problems I have in my mind when I see this one that is prospering and I'm not prospering, the problem that I have, amen, when I think about those who have done me wrong, but brothers and sisters, if I want to recover, I've got to look to God and say, God, do something for me. The song said I was down at the altar, down on my knees, and I cried, Lord, do something for me. Hallelujah. You've got to come to the God, understanding that he is the one that can do something for you. I've tried for 18 years, been for 18 years. I've struggled with this thing for 18 years. I've struggled in this situation. And amen, I've tried to do things myself, but I couldn't, the Bible said, she couldn't lift herself up. You've tried to lift yourself up, and it didn't help. you tried drugs, and it didn't help. you tried alcohol, and it didn't help. you tried things. Amen. To lift yourself up. But you got to understand that you got to go back to the originator. you got to go, no, go back to the one. Amen. Who created you. Because he knows all about you. He knows all about your struggles. He knows what's going on. Because of this, rather, 
You couldn't walk upright and straight. Your path cannot be straight. Have you ever tried to, to, to walk, amen, in a place where there is no, you can't see where you're going. In other words, your head is down and you're trying to walk straight, but because you, you, don't, you don't have a point of, of, of reference, you may go a little bit here or go a little bit here because you have no point of, of reference. Many of us, amen, have no point of reference. Amen, we can't, we're so bogged down, our heads are so down. You can't lift up and see Christ. You can't lift up and see your deliverer. Your deliverer is here. Amen. And so what we happen to have is that we are looking down at the rock bottom and can't see the rock, Christ Jesus, who is the lifter up of our heads. We're unable to lift ourselves up above our circumstances. Hallelujah. We're never able to look to the hills from whence cometh our help because we're helpless and we're hopeless. Our hearts are filled with loneliness and despair. We fail to recognize that God is our present help in the time of need. God is here right now and you've got to understand it today that you don't have to be bent over you don't have to continue to live the way that you have and some of us are, are in a man our, our finances are bent over because we have failed to see Christ in our finances. Some of us, amen, there are habits that we have that have caused us to be bent over. But I've got news for you today that you serve a God. And he said, come unto me, I'm even labor and I'm heavy laden and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for I'm meek and lonely. Hallelujah. You can come to Jesus and he can make a change in your life. Don't look at me. Look at Jesus. Don't look at your circumstances. Look at Jesus. Don't look at what you don't have and look at what you got. You got Jesus. You got Jesus. Your past can cause you, amen, to carry your a hung down head. Your, it can cause you to carry feelings of unworthiness of his blessings. Amen. It can cause you to be unworthy of the call that is on your life. It can cause you, amen, to still feel the guilt of the sins of the past and because of that we're bent over amen because of the past and because of amen the, the weaknesses that we have of the present amen these things have come our way but i want you to understand there is a way out tell your neighbor there is a way out amen telling you in the right place at the right time you're watching at the right time and right where you are is the place because we serve a god that is everywhere and can touch your body right where you are can touch your backbone can touch the issues that are happening in your life god is a Set me up upon a rock. And now some 
specific everything dead would have come forward so by the same logic the same token had Jesus said unto her Valerie thou art loosed the deliverance would have been limited to Valerie <laughs> God help me in here what because Jesus said, woman, because he said, woman, thou art loosed. The deliverance is available to every child that has been over, every daughter that's been over, every son of God that's been over. Church needs to be loose of some bad habits. 
spoke that word. That back that had been over. She walked her life for 18 years looking at the ground. Every now and then she'd probably pick up to make sure to see if she's going in the right direction. But she continued for 18 years. The pain of the scoliosis, 18 years. The issue that you have in your marriage, 18 years. Issue on your job, I'm saying 18, it can be 18 months or 18 days. She was bent over. But when Jesus said, woman, thou art loosed, can you imagine the things that are going on in her body as she begins to, to, to get straight, become straight? She became straight, and when she became straight, she began to give God some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The back was made straight. Her spirit was elevated. The pains of the past were removed. There was now a praise on her lips. I don't know what you've been challenged with. I don't know what is bent in your life. Sometimes when God gives a word, and sometimes when when uh, the pastor, whoever is, is on your road, talking about stuff that's, that's going on with you, does not mean that he man that you were targeted, not by the pastor. But you were targeted by the Lord. Yes. Jesus saw her and spoke to her knee. Jesus sees you and speaks to your knees. And for that, I'll give him some praise. I'll give you the glory. I'll give you the honor. Forever and ever. I'll lift up your name. I'll give you the Give you the honor. Yes, I will. Give it forever and ever. I'll lift up your name. Keep saying that, but Lord, God, today, God says, I'm here to give you a realignment. I'm here to change your crookedness. The areas in our life where we find ourselves, God says, I'm gonna realign you now. I'm calling you out. I see your need. But when Jesus said that, woman thou art loose, it was to whoever would receive it. We can still be bent over if we don't take what God is serving today. He's talking to someone today. Don't let your pride hinder you from a man becoming strayed. God, I see my own life. How the past can paralyze you. Ella 
about it. And I kind of let you know this, that, 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 that God, God was showing me how so often, can I talk about me? It's hard for me to lift my head. So oftentimes, amen, when I go different places, it's not so much humility as, as I remember how my past has been, and I struggle with this over and over again. And I struggle with the fact that I don't feel worthy the past is the past, but but I don't feel early. I don't know, am I by myself? Has anyone been in a place where you haven't felt worthy of the blessings of the Lord? You haven't felt worthy of the calling that's on your life? You don't haven't felt worthy. And so we're bent or korabosha. We are bent over. to bring deliverance because he says because you are my child you are worthy look at your neighbor come on come on look at them amen encourage them they tell them you are worthy uh, I know I told you to stand up and go to somebody but I, I somebody needs to be delivered today uh, amen stand to your feet and I need for you to go to these three people look them in the eye, amen, and say, You are worthy. Hallelujah, you are worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy. Hallelujah, regardless of what the enemy has done, amen, in your life, you are worthy. Why? Because you are a child of God. Come on, minister to them. Let them know, lift up your head. Because you were worthy. Hallelujah. You may not, amen, done everything right. You may not have crossed the T's and dotted every high. But you're still worthy. You are a worthy vessel of God. Amen. Thank you, my sister. Tell me again. Tell me one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes.
so I can see clearly, so I can walk right. I can walk that straight and narrow because I see clearly. Hallelujah. Right where you are, if you, if you need that alignment, amen, I know the presence of the Lord is here, and the presence of the Lord is right where you are. He can realign your heart. He can realign your heart. He can realign your emotions. He can realign, amen, things that you're struggling with. Thank you, Father. You can simply say, Lord, I know that you sent your son to die for me. I was out of order. I was out of alignment. But thank you, God. I can accept you as my personal sin. And the great chiropractor, the, the great amen, back specialist. Can cause you to lift your head up. I can now walk in the presence of the Lord with my head lifted up because you're so good. Hallelujah. Dave, if you pray prayers that, then God is now coming to your life. And has now started that realignment. Amen. Cause you to become straight. Can give you backbone. Someone say, God, give me backbone. So I can stand in these evil days. Come on, give the Lord an offering prayer. I know that those who are in the building today, man, witnessed back surgery. Some of us didn't witness back surgery. We we received back surgery. Thank God. Give the Lord one more praise. Every day, sometimes when I, I, I get up in the morning, I can't get straight up because uh, I, I will. I have my equilibrium is it is off cause of different things, different medications and that kind of thing. Sometimes I just have to get up very gingerly. When you get up in the morning, I want, when you get up, I want you to, to, to do this motion. Start thanking God for the realignment. When you've been pushed down on your job, go to the bathroom and do this. Thank God for the realignment. God is my help, my present help in time of trouble. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord the, another offering. Another offering of praise. We're going to receive our offering, our natural offering at this time. We thank those of you who have already given, amen, electronically. We thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your tithing. Those of you who, who tithe faithfully, amen, each month to this ministry, we say thank you. And we know that God continues to do great things because of your obedience to his word. 
Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the gifts and the givers today. Those who have already given, Lord Jesus, and those who are in the process of giving, whether it be online or whether it be in, in this service today, God, we ask you, to, ask you to open up the windows of heaven, pour them out blessings that there is no room to receive. Rebuke the devourer for your sake. God, and that the enemy cannot destroy the fruits of the vine. Father, do it for us. In Jesus' name.